Hey guys, it's Axiomatic Uncertainty here, and today uh, I'm going to be demonstrating the concept of anti-role in Unity, uh, and then also talking about how some of these scripts work. Um, I will be crediting the script authors in the comments, or in the description actually, um, just because I honestly don't think that it would be pointful for me to try to write my own script, given the fact that there are so many perfect scripts. Uh, scripts out there already uh, that do the job on their own uh, and so I will make reference to that in a second I'm not going to try to claim that I wrote these scripts because you know I didn't um, but I will try my best to explain to you exactly how the script works so uh, that's what we're going to do first I think uh, but actually here Here's what we'll do first. We'll uh, work with the physics, and then in a second, I will explain how it works once I've applied it to the car and set it up, and you understand how you have to set it up. So, if you want to, uh, I will actually link a description of how anti-roll bars in work in real cars. Uh, but for now, we're just going to go into how this one works in here. Uh, basically, an anti-roll bar provides a stabilization force. So when you're making a turn, uh, this wheel here, for example, if I make um, you know, a right turn has a tendency to get more force on it. And an anti-roll bar takes this force and transfers it so that instead you're applying a downward force to this wheel as well and a little bit of an upward force to this wheel, right? So it essentially can help stabilize the car because with this wheel, um, you know, not present, it will actually uh, allow the car to roll in the opposite direction. So it creates an anti-roll force, right? Um, and that allows this car to stay on the ground better, right? So, in order to actually do this, we're going to change a few things. First off, I want to change my drag coefficient. Uh, I've been thinking about this a lot, uh, and the car, as we, you know, keep progressing through the series, is going to get faster, uh, so we're going to need less drag just for now in order to, uh, interact with things better, right? So now we should be able to get up into higher speeds than, you know, 10 miles per hour. We won't get that fast, but we will get, you know, moderately faster, right? So you can see we can get into the 30s, but, oops, if we turn, we instantly flip, right? And that is a combination of things uh, that's causing this issue. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go into our wheels, right? And we're going to change some values. So here our stiffness, we're going to make uh, this one or so, right? And that's because when the sideways friction is too stiff, right, our car will literally never slide, right? But in real life, if you turn too quickly, your car skids out of control. So that's what we want in our game, right? So now as we start accelerating, if we turn, we slide, right? And we do get a lot of an upward force, which causes our car to sort of slant upward. But we'll see in a second that we can fix that as well. Um, so we still flip, right, at 30 miles per hour or so. And this is going to help us with that. So our anti-roll bar is right here. I can just drag this onto the car. And uh, I'm going to set my right and left wheels. And the right wheel is just going to be the back right, left wheel being the back left. And I can just save that. right. And then we can come down here. We can change our force. I'm going to use like 40,000 for now. Right? Just something super strong so that our car has no tendencies to sort of roll. So you can see as we turn, it doesn't even lean. Um, if we get up to the 30s, we may get a bit of leaning. But as you can see, we're stable by comparison to before where we were flipping quite easily. Um, and we can even push 40 and probably make this turn without any issues. Right? So that's definitely going to help our physics. You can see... As I turn, I do slide a little bit um, because I'm turning far too quickly. Okay, and uh, actually, we're going to now do some more work on this. So, what we're going to do is uh, not going to be work on the actual vehicle, but rather on explaining it. So, I'm going to open Visual Studio up and uh, talk to you about what the script itself is doing uh, and also, you know, where you can get the script from me. So, First off, what the script is doing, uh, and, you know, actually, here, first, where you can get the script. So, you can get the script from the description. Um, 
I'm going to place the links to both the ex explanation of the script itself, uh, not really the explanation of the script, but the explanation of how the script is meant to work and how it's supposed to mimic an anti-roll bar, uh, and also a link to a C-sharp version of that script on Stack Overflow. Um, and then I think that's going to be it for that. Maybe I'll link uh, a description of the physics of anti-roll bars as well. We'll see. Anyhow, this uh, script, I just put it into an anti-roll bar uh, you know, script in C, or in, uh, C Sharp and Unity, right? And then I've copied and pasted the code into this. Um, and what I'm going to explain to you now is how this is working. So first off, we have our wheel colliders. Obviously, um, these are just going to be the back left and back right wheels of the car. We have the car switching by, right? Sorry. Um, now, this script is meant to be placed on the car. So, of course, we get the rigid body of the car. Um, once we start the uh, game, whereupon, you know, the vehicle is immediately, or wherein the vehicle is immediately, you know, functional, um, you know, with this anti-roll script. Honestly, I think just putting it as a required component might have been better, but, uh, this is fine the way that it is right now. Um, they set the default anti-roll to 5,000, but obviously we've exceeded that, um, and then our wheel hits. So the concept of the wheel hit is that uh, this hit, if I just, I'll actually just look up a mere scripting manual in order to show you um, exactly what I mean. But the idea of the wheel hit is that whenever our wheel collider hits something, we can actually output that information in the form of a wheel hit um, object, right? So if we create a new wheel hit, we can actually get all of these properties from it. So we can get, you know, collider, the force of the hit, the forward direction, um, the forward slip, normal, point, sideways direction, and sideways slip. So everything there um, can be had plus, you know, even more stuff. Uh, so we can basically interact with our, uh, you know, wheel colliders, collisions, with this uh, object. So we create a new one, then we check if this is grounded. So the way that this is working is basically we, it, it seems it confusing at first perhaps that we've set this to a Boolean, um, but basically the reason for that is that this bit here, right, this get grounded hit, um, this can be interpreted as a Boolean because if we can't get a grounded hit because there isn't one, this will be false. And if we can, this will be true. And therefore, this ends up being output as a boolean. Um, and you can see again, we we set the output to be this hit value so that we can interact with it through uh, grounded L. Right. So I hope that makes sense. I'm sorry, I'm very tired right now. Um, and now we can actually go into our treble L and then interact further with this uh, wheel hit, right? So we can take our wheel L uh, here, and then we can actually take this transform, right? Obviously, um, you know, you understand that, but the concept behind this is that we can take this position, hit dot point, which is in world space, and transform it into our local space, then get the Y value, and that gives us the distance below the car, right? And then what we can do is we can actually get this wheel radius, right? Now, right now, right, um, we want our wheel to be a set, well, okay, so we want our uh, hit point, right, to be a set distance below the car. But then we want to subtract the radius because we want to get the location of the wheel relative to the car and then divide it by the suspension distance. And what that'll do is... Um, it'll actually give us more information than we originally would have had. So, say we're, you know, um, 100, un or, you know, no, that would be unreasonable, 0.1 units below the car and our suspension distance is 0.5 and our wheel radius is 0.25, right? Then we end up with a 0.75 um, for our suspension distance as of right now. The default suspension distance is 0.5, so we get 1.5 as our output here. 
then on this side, say we have the exact opposite, right? And we end up above the suspension distance, so we get 0.5 as our output. We subtract the two, we get one, and our anti-roll force ends up being 5,000, right? So essentially in this case, it's the exact opposite. We're normalizing with respect to the default suspension distance on the uh, right side of the vehicle, but we're also uh, taking the exact same steps in order to find our suspension distance as of this instant of the gameplay. And this is all occurring in a fixed update, so we update at the same rate as all other physical processes. Um, essentially, that allows us to modulate our anti-roll force according to the uh, rolling of the car, right? So if the car rolls right, we apply a force that rolls it left. If the car rolls left, we apply a force that rolls it right, and so on. So I hope that that makes sense. Uh, and now, if I demonstrate in game, it makes more sense. Uh, here, we're just adding a force at the position of the wheel. Um, obviously, that should make sense to you, given the fact that um, you know we want to be applying the force as if it's a part of the suspension, so it's going to be applied at the center of the wheel and in the direction, in the vertical direction of the uh, wheel, essentially. You know, it's not going to be applied in the vertical direction of world space because the wheel could be t slanted. Um, so that's an important thing to note. Um, car, rigid body. Okay, this uh, is going to be the exact same thing. And then before that, we obviously do a check to make sure that the wheel is actually on the ground because otherwise these forces should not be applied. So I hope that that makes sense. As always, links will be in the description to give credit to these guys. They did an amazing job uh, writing these scripts. They're very nice, uh, and they definitely get the job done. So I would definitely recommend checking that all out. Um, it's going to help your car's physics a lot, and uh, you know, obviously... It improves things in ways that we really couldn't have without uh, simulating, you know, what they do in real life. Because, you know, just moving this uh, center of mass downward is not going to improve the car itself. Um, so, yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. As always, please remember to like, comment, uh, and subscribe if you enjoyed uh, this video, right? this crazy um and yeah if you uh if you want to uh comment literally anything i will be okay with that you know i just want to see uh your uh, thoughts right i want to know what you think of the gate uh the tutorial in general of uh how this thing's progressing what you want to see in particular uh what you haven't seen that you thought uh should have been done better you know if it was in the tutorial series or if it wasn't even and we included you know something that was relevant to it but not everything uh, that ought to have been and then uh, you know just in general uh, I like to hear your feedback if you liked it please tell me if you didn't give you know give a reason I guess and uh, yeah uh, stay tuned for the next one as always uh, yeah okay bye guys